Welcome to the Embracing Brokenness podcast, where our goal is to engage with all of those willing to venture deeper into their transformational journey with Christ. Here's your host and co-founder of Embracing Brokenness Ministries, Steve Adams. Hello, folks. Welcome to the podcast. We are going to go back a few thousand years to the early account in Genesis of Adam and Eve's choice. They made a decision that has had consequences for every single one of us for thousands of years since. So I'm going to play for you a recording that we did a couple years ago around Valentine's Day, teaching on the subject of the consequences of the fall and our brain and our wounds. Now, we use a a drawing that if you go to our website at embracingbrokenness.org, you'll notice in the center at the lower part of the page, the tree of brokenness. Now, there's an explanation for that, and there's so much more we could say on the subject right now, but it's a great illustration of the struggle that we have as individuals in a broken world in a place where our our core longings can really only be met by God, but we choose to meet them on our own. And of course, that was pretty evident back in the garden when Adam and Eve chose to bite that fruit and make a decision that they wanted to be like God. Of course, they had a little bit of a tempter in the process, but I'd like you to listen in and we're going to tackle this in a little bit of a different way. Colleen will talk about the the brain and how we can rewire the brain in some ways and if you're a science fan and you want to look a little bit more into neuroplasticity it's a fascinating subject but the long and the short of it is that we by just creating a different way of thinking of God and even us inside of that relationship we can change our posture, our belief systems in a way that can encounter him in a much greater sense. So she'll talk about that and then we'll get a little bit into some of the things that um, we experience and how the Tree of Brokenness outlines that. So tune in as you have. And if you have any questions, just check in with us, send us an email, uh, get us on Messenger on Facebook or some other means on social media. Let's have a conversation. I'd love to hear what you think about this as we presented it. And our topic today is consequences of the fall. So we hear a lot that there is this journey to make us better, to return us to the garden that has to do with this transformation process. And now we know that, you know, if you think this is very simplistic, but if you think you've got a love center and a fear center in your brain, fear center being self-centered things, what you want, love center being what God wants, very simplistically, that the more what I feed grows. You feed something and it grows. Feed your face, you're going to grow. Feed somebody else's face, they're going to grow. And what you feed grows, okay? So I always like in this very simplistic way to say, in order to get the antidote for the fall, which is love, I've got to feed the love center. I've got to feed the God is in control center. And I need to do activities that start to create a different pathway in my brain. But here's the fight in my brain. The more I feed the me center, the more I'm increasingly creating a pathway that's reinforcing it's all about me, all right? So we see in the brain, it's all about God, it's all about me. And the interesting part is, I tend to think a lot more about me than I think about God every day. So in order to like make this new neural pathway that constantly is gonna say, it's all about God, so that my brain can transform, I've got to be very, very intentional about creating pathways, okay? The interesting thing about a superhighway when it's created in your brain is your first thought, your first smell, your first sighting of something takes you somewhere right away, all right? And those powerful places that we go, um, 
because something reminds us or it smells like I, I cannot hopefully none of you wear Old Spice I'll forgive you if you do but Old Spice cologne was I had a dentist I, I have a very small mouth even though I'm very loud I had to have 14 teeth baby teeth pulled when I was little and my dentist was terrible he would like jam this Novocaine into my mouth and go count with me and you're like on, uh, uh, I mean, it was traumatic. I like hated this whole thing. The problem is I think he like dumped himself into a vat of Old Spice before he came to the office. So he could literally be down by where the clinics are right now and I'd smell him coming. And what would happen inside of me? My heart would start racing. I'd be like, I want out of this chair. He's coming, okay? I now am at a store out in public. What do you think happens when I smell Old Spice? You want, you want to run. My body immediately is like, where is it? Let me get away from it. <laughs> like, I can't do Old Spice. And that's all Steve ever wore when I first met him. <laughs> no, I did not. <laughs> well, yeah. But it is funny that I, I just pick it up and I'm like, out the door. Right? One of my most loving feelings was my grandmother... Um, used to make bacon and eggs and coffee. Of course, I was little, I wasn't drinking the coffee. But I could remember this scent of bacon and coffee mixing together mm -hmm. and knowing I was gonna get up. And the other thing was, I couldn't smell these. She always had those little pecan rolls. I think you get them for like 99 cents, mm -hmm. these little things. Yeah. They were the greatest things ever. And so I would smell the coffee and the bacon and I would know that roll was coming and my body would just go like, oh, life is so good. <laughs> right? I now when I smell bacon and coffee going together, I'm like, oh, life is so good. <laughs> our bodies are powerful in our associations and so they're building just by a scent. If I see the color of a car go by, that was the color of a car and make and model of a car of somebody who did something bad to me, what happens? I start freaking out inside, okay? Powerful association. So in order for that to not live in me, I need to make new associations. Most of our associations and why I've asked you to explore how you feel about God is that when I told you that 72% of the church has a view of God that is targeting the fear center, When we hear God, now you know the neural pathway is going, fear, fear, run away, get away from God. And this by the people who are saying he's my healer, he's my Jesus, he's my daddy, he's my only way back, okay? And we're targeting the fear center of the brain. And why I told you, if you want a better relationship with God, six weeks to start to create. Yeah. About three weeks, you should hit the tipping point if you can stay pure. About three weeks, you'll create the new pathway. Your super highway to the love center of God is about a six-week journey if you are afraid of God. And I certainly was in my journey. I did not like God. I liked Jesus. I thought God was a really scary person. And so for me to say, oh, Jesus is God, I'm like, that's really great to say. If you've seen me, you've seen the Father. I still don't like God. I thought he was scary. But I just wanted to discipline me and be nasty and not come close to me. Six weeks it took for me to say, show me a picture of your love every day. And eventually my brain must have flipped. I didn't have it scanned, but I know something major changed in my life. Okay, And so um, a big part of the journey is to understand where we are investing. Transformation is not about, well, let me grab that scripture and take it captive till it comes true. So what's going on down here? What's going on in the root system of the tree? If you don't address the things that hurt you, what we call the wounds on the inside, okay? We would never leave in our society the kinds of wounds that you have on the inside of you. If you would actually like be walking around with those wounds on the outside, we'd all look at you going, you're gonna bleed to death and we'd get you to emergency room to have them sutured, right? And we'd say they're infected, you're bleeding on people. How many of us walk around with worse wounds on the inside of our body? They're killing us, those wounds. They have to be addressed by living God. And we see Jesus on the cross and we see clearly he says, what does he say? 
He takes on stripes. He takes on wounds for our own healing. Address the wounds on the inside. But we as a society say, oh no, don't worry about the wounds on the inside. They're not apparent. Hide them. Put fig leaves and coverings over them. Don't let anybody know you were hurt that way. But I promise you at the top of this tree, if you have had a problem with drugs, if you have had a problem with anger, if you have had a problem with workaholism, with churchism, um, with overeating, I don't care what you got addicted to because every single one of us gets addicted to something. Every one of us has an ism. It is so sad in this world that there's prettier isms and uglier isms. Guys, anything in the God spot that's not God is ugly. You are not getting what you need. You're not returning to the garden. And when we say the ugly things are ugly, but if you go do one of these other prettier things, you're going to be fine. You're no better off than doing the bad thing. Okay? The reality is your ism is a smoke alarm going off telling you that your house is on fire. I go to shoot up heroin, my house is on fire. Heroin is not the problem. I don't have some weird disease, unknown to man, that I'm gonna go do something. What's the problem? My house is on fire. In other words, I got broken things down in the root system of my tree that are saying, I can't get my needs met in God, my core longings met in God, Things are blocking me from getting what I need. And the desire to get your God spot filled is stronger than your sex drive, your drive to eat, your drive for survival. Put them all together, magnify them by about 10. You will be driven to get your God needs met. We left the garden and that piece of us, you know, God-shaped hole that was left in us will drive for anything to get it met. And our problem is... We keep substituting things because we don't know how to get it met. And what we're telling you is part of the journey is to actually fix the pieces in the root system. If your roots are like straws, drawing up all the nutrients so that you bloom, and your straw's broken, what are you going to do? You got a problem, right? Yeah. Fix the straw. <clears throat> your journey is to fix the straw, okay? What Jesus will do all the work. That's the most amazing thing. Is I, I love my relationship with God. It is the most one-sided relationship I have ever been in. Because there's so many times I don't have a clue what I'm doing. I don't know. And you know what? My best prayers are when I'm so overwhelmed. I say one word. You know what it is? Very loud. It can't be Jesus. Somebody said Jesus. Amen. Oh. Could be amen. Oh. Help. So there are times, have you ever been there, where my world looks so dark, I just scream, help. Sometimes it's two words, Jesus, help. <laughs> but that's it. I think they're some of my best, most honest prayers I've ever had. Not eloquent, oh, I need you to do this, this, this. I get out of my own way. I'm like, I don't have a clue how to fix this. Help. And guess what? God does incredible things. There are times I could not get up in the morning to get to work, and I would say, I don't even know what to do, God. Can you just wake me up in the morning? Guess what? In the morning, I would feel like I got hit by those paddles that bring you back to life. <laughs> like, wow, I'm awake. Here I go. God will do. It's amazing what he wants to do for you if you ask. But he wants to repair the brakes. I will say one other thing, keeping you over a few minutes here. But your wounds in the bottom of that tree actually drive in your life. You know, so if I had a wound that my dad abandoned me at the side of the road when I was six years old, true story, probably one of my deeper wounds, he abandoned the whole family for a reason later on I understood, but at the time didn't, I felt like I got abandoned. Um, so I got abandoned. So what happened in my life is later on, I believed my protector would always leave me. No one was going to protect me. Men always leave. Okay. And then what it did was it sewed into my identity. I'm not worth staying for. Okay. So it became an identity question. If a little girl's daddy won't stay with her, then I'm not worth staying. So lies started to drive my, in me about my worth. 
any man ever said anything or acted like he was gonna leave, major emotional upheaval came on up in my life. And when that upheaval came in my life, I actually moved to dysfunctional behavior. I went, my ism started to light up like crazy, right? Because those wounds drive what you believe about yourself, drive even your reactions, your anxiety, your depressions, you know, your feelings of self-worth are coming from those. And they just drive our isms. And so to not tell you that if we don't find a way to get under, for you to sit in a posture for Jesus to heal, you're never going to get to the, the tree of restoration, which is the fruit of the spirit. All of that has to be healed in your life. And that's the important piece about the wounds and the trauma and about the model that we want to put forward to you is you got to get under that if you want to have a transformed, successful life. Um, dear Heavenly Father, I ask right now, Father, a strong head of protection around people's minds and imaginations, Lord. I just pray, Lord, that any seeds that have been planted today, Father, that you would want to water and, Lord, to move forward in the place of people's identity, Father, that Satan cannot come rob, steal, and destroy anything that you've begun here. Lord, I just pray that in each person you drive a, just a deep desire, Lord, for connection with you and for healing from some of these things that have trained wrecked our lives. Bless each person as they go. Let your love on this Valentine's Day pour out that they feel it um, in incredible different kinds of ways this day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. This was another episode of the Embracing Brokenness podcast. For more information on Embracing Brokenness Ministries or to subscribe to our blog, podcast, YouTube channel, or engage with us on social media, please visit our website at embracingbrokenness.org. Thanks for joining us.